Hi there guys, welcome to the video, thank you very much for tuning in. And what you see here is the frame of the Geek 35 from Aiken Electronics or from GoFly. I think it's a cooperation between Aiken Electronics and GoFly, even though I must admit <laughs> I had never heard of GoFly. Uh, maybe you have, tell me in the comment section below. Okay, so this frame struck me as very interesting. One of my favorite quadcopters is the Cap RC Cinelog 35 and a very nice uh, fast paced cinematic quadcopter with propeller guards as this frame has and yeah, fully carbon fiber right there are a couple of uh, TPU prints on this frame but it's mostly carbon fiber even these prop guards they aren't ducts prop guards yeah very very nice I had to have me one <laughs> and as you see here I have me one. In this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about this Geek 35 from Aiken Electronics and GoFly. Here we go. <laughs> you serious? So guys, if you order up your Geek 35 from GoFly or from Aiken uh, Electronics, you will receive these two bags. And on your left, obviously, you see most of the frame. And I can already tell you <laughs> that the assembly, the assembly will be pretty easy. easy. Yeah. Okay. So it kind of comes pre-assembled, so that's nice. Now, disclaimer: Aiken FV actually sent me this frame for free. Yeah, but it also means that uh, you might receive it in a slightly different way, maybe with an extra outer box. Other than that, I think you'd receive what you see here. Two bags with, well, one bag with the frame and all the accessories, if you will. Yeah, so let's open both bags and see what we have. Alrighty, alrighty, again, on your left you see the frame, and yeah, again, it's mostly assembled, so that's uh, luxurious. Uh, I've never come across this, a frame kit that's already assembled. And from the looks of it, uh, the frame itself isn't complicated to build, but, well, you won't have to build it anyway. You will probably actually have to disassemble it a little bit to get the electronics in, right? Other than that, that's the frame. What is the... Uh, this is the top side. Yeah, this is the top side. You'll be installing your motors upside down in this in this frame. Yeah, it's a pusher configuration as a lot of these uh, Cine Whoop kind of quadcopters are. Okay, so uh, we get a lot of accessories actually. We get uh, ducted fans, uh, 90 millimeter free blade fans from Gemfan. That's nice. One, uh, actually, two sets of propellers. Okie dokie. So that's, uh, well, extra luxurious in most frame kits you don't get any propellers at all. In this frame kit you get two sets of propellers. Are they the same actually? Yeah, they kind of, they look uh, like the same propellers but in different colors. So that's definitely very nice. We get, and uh, this is the, what is this, the FV camera mount. And is that, what is that, is it a, a TPU print or is that a mold, a molded, injection molded, injection molded piece? Very, very nice. Okay, so in case you don't uh, know, injection molded pieces cost more because you have to develop the mold, which is a costly part of production, right? Okay, so you get uh, two battery straps. Two battery straps, yeah, two battery straps, that's very nice. You get a lot of zip ties. Wow, I wish all frames came with this many zip ties. Enormous, luxurious. Okay, we get a landing. No, these are probably battery anti-slip pads. Yeah, quite a collection, impressive, okay. And uh, what is this? I am not completely sure. I will be actually in uh, a couple of minutes. I'll show you the quadcopter with some motors on, and uh, by then I'll know what this piece is as well. Okay, and uh, okay, mounting accessories for your flight stack and such, and screws, some actually electronics cables. Okay, interesting, and more electronics cables okay also 
you get a, a manual, yeah, um, especially if you buy the ready-made quadcopter with electronics, but for the frame kit you also get exploded views and parts lists. Yeah, so that way you'll know what screw goes where. Definitely very nice and it's actually a color printed manual. Very nice. Hartje So guys, there you have it, the completed frame. <laughs> well, I only added a couple of things here. The camera mount at the front over here, which doubles, as you can see, as an action camera mount. So that's nice. Also, uh, the orange things over here are rubber, probably, or TPU, I'm not sure. But uh, they should act, uh, they are intended as uh, vibration isolators for your FV camera. Also, I've added these orange things which will go around the power leads. You can uh, have your power leads uh, come out over here or uh, over here, and they will protect your power leads from the carbon fiber, right? Uh, rubbing uh, against the carbon fiber, uh, potentially cutting them. So that's a definitely a nice touch. This orange thing over here will basically friction fit your FPV antenna in place. Very nice. And over here, you've got that uh, mount for your immortal T. I think I haven't actually found good pictures of uh, this being used, but this will work. In a couple of other pictures I saw that um, they uh, mounted Immortal T's right over here with some zip ties. So that's also a possibility, but well, they provide you with this TPU print. A couple of other things I want to show you is uh, these bags with screws, right? So these uh, bags not only tell you what size of screw it is, but also what the screw is for. So screws to mount your motors, screws to mount a uh, Vista unit, DJI Digital Vista unit, and screws and washers to mount your stack or your all-in-one board. So very nice. Uh, above and beyond, right? Uh, most uh, frames come with bag with screws and sometimes the bag say what screw it is. This time you uh, can also see what screw is for what. And especially if you're building a quadcopter for the first time, this will help you out. So again, that's a nice touch, I think. Okay, so what more can I tell you about this frame here? Yeah, basically what you see here, this uh, carbon fiber piece is um, more or less the entire frame, right? You'll mount your motors to it, your flight stack or your all-in-one board. And uh, yeah, that's... Well, you will mount probably your Vista or VTX to the bottom plate over here. But if you take off the rest of the frame, these hoops, and uh, the standoffs uh, for those hoops, uh, you'd still have a flying quadcopter, flyable quadcopter more or less. So, also that means, uh, like on the Cinelog from GAPRC, you don't have a wet and dry section. The Cinelog has this vibration isolated uh, piece over here for your action camera and the FV camera is also mounted to that base. So again, this is uh, what you'd call a wet and dry setup where the entire optics setup of your quadcopter is soft mounted. So we will just see, right? I will be building up uh, this quadcopter to a flying uh, drone. I'll also be reviewing the quadcopter as I'll be using the electronics, the motors and the stack uh, that Aiken FV also uses on their ready to fly. So that should be interesting. As you probably know, this Cinelog from CapRC is a hugely popular quadcopter. So yeah, I'm anxious to see whether this Geek 35 will perform well. Okay, and the last thing I want to show you is this wire piece. This is uh, actually nice in case your flight controller, your all-in-one board doesn't have a DJI plug. They provide you with this breakout cable so that you can still plug in the Vista unit. Otherwise, otherwise what will happen is uh, you'll have your uh, all-in-one board mounted to the top deck over here, underneath the top deck, and then have your Vista mounted to this plate over here. So yeah, you'll have to uh, solder it up and then mount things. That'll be quite impractical. So again, they provide you with this cable set so that you can 
solder up this cable to your all-in-one board, this cable to the, to the Vista unit, and then simply plug it in once you've, so, uh, once you've uh, mounted things in place. So uh, yeah, very, very nice touch to uh, provide that with the frame. So yeah, it will definitely be uh, interesting to see uh, whether these quadcopters stack up to each other. Uh, uh, the concept is largely the same, a three and a half inch Cinewoop with prop guards, but in this case uh, carbon fiber prop guards, whereas this one has plastic prop guards and those tend to break. Now these aren't freestyle quadcopters, but if you hit a tree for instance, uh, you do want those prop guards to uh, be able to soak up the bumps if you will. So I've got my Cap RC set up, this is uh, how it came from the factory, uh, with a, a sideways mount for your battery, right? So uh, the battery will run this way. And this Geek 35 can be set up like that as well, but also with a battery running uh, lengthwise. You've got uh, slots for your battery straps over here and over here, so that's nice and flexible. All right, guys, even though I don't have a reference weight, I bought a Capacity Synlog as a Razor Fly. I do want to weight down this frame, see what it weighs. Oh, and uh, that is definitely less than the Capacity frame. Um, the Capacity says that their frame, the Synlog 35 frame, weighs approximately 105 grams, so slightly over 100 grams. Yeah. 88 grams for this key 35 so the benefit of these whoops being carbon fiber might not only be that they should be sturdier it's also lighter so that is definitely nice to see yeah i'm happy to see that especially as i'll be using approximately the same setup at least the motor size as my uh, Synlog 35 to uh, properly compare them. Also, Aiken FPV uses the same motor size as the original Synlog, so not the Synlog Pro, the original Synlog that I also have, so uh, yeah. In that sense, the lower weight of the frame will definitely help out this Geek 35 frame. Alrighty guys, I should also tell you about the mounting options for your stack, right? So what do we have here? And the top plate we've got... Yeah, the, you see the press nuts, right? Press nuts, and this is 25 by uh, 25. Basically a whoop board. And, hey, this is interesting. you got 25 by 25 here as well. Oh, that's actually very flexible, right? You can orient or mount your whoop board in a normal fashion straight uh, forwards or 45 degree turned which is typical uh, well uh, that's how whoop boards are often mounted but again you've got the choice mount it 45 degrees or straight forward interesting okay and uh, you also get what is this 20 by 20 20 by 20 so huh, okay yeah that, that's also a possibility and here at the bottom in this uh, bottom plate you see press nuts installed already as well and that's 20 by 20 but also again 20 by 20 interesting so uh, even your Vista you can mount in uh, well uh, f normal configuration or 45 degree turned whatever floats your boat huh Interesting, never seen that before, but uh, definitely flexible. So that is nice. Okay, so do I have complaints? Uh, as you can tell, I've already mounted my motors, uh, no issues. I've uh, secured the wires down with the shrink tube. You don't get that with the frame, uh, but well, as you saw, you get a lot of zip ties with the frame. Um, yeah, no issues here, however, I do notice that you can see the windings well in other words there's no dust cover um yeah i, I think yeah the, the synlog has a little more of a dust cover over the motors doesn't really matter i think yeah okay just something i noticed also that this is and well it's not an issue but a finding the frame has a GoPro style mount, right? But there's no uh, naked GoPro style mount, which are uh, smaller. 
So, for instance, the steel lock comes with a naked Copro mount. At least mine came with one. So, if you want to uh, mount lighter cameras, then you'll have to fabricate something, 3D print something. No big issue, but it's something I noticed. And um, that's about it. Yeah, so the, the frame is a little bit lighter. It is center section, so basically the base frame, is also stiffer somehow, even though uh, I think it's the same thickness as the Synlog, but maybe it's a different kind of carbon fiber. This plate, this feels more stiff than the Synlog. Yeah. I personally haven't had much issues with the Synlog, uh, not with the whoops or the, the center frame, but I do see people breaking them. So this should be sturdier. Also, basically this, this entire whoop section is mounted to the center frame with TPU prints. Uh, over here there's a TPU print, over here there's a TPU print, and well, on the other sides of course as well. So there will be a little bit of give. If you hit something, there will be a little bit of play, even though it's not a whole lot, but there will be a little bit of play between the parts that hit something and uh, the center mass. Remember, your LiPo will be on display, so it uh, should work out. Yeah, I've also found I've got a Lumineer 2.5 inch Cine Whoop, and if you crash quadcopters like this on pavement, that carbon fiber will get damaged more easily than plastic. So it's not always beneficial. Depends a little bit on the way you fly. If you fly over grass and such a lot, then this carbon fiber will work out better. Also when you hit trees probably, but again, if you uh, crash onto pavement, which I have with my two and a half inch Lumineer quadcopter, uh, the carbon fiber will get scuffed. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, not much more to report really. It's, uh, to me, this looks like a well-engineered frame. It strikes me as a smart design. And I guess uh, the proof is in the pudding, right? I'll be uh, doing a review of the entire the RTF quadcopter in uh, a future video. So we will see, but for now, I'm happy with what I see. Are you happy with what you see? Tell me in the comment section below. For now, I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.